Welcome to the Refugee Rendezvous, where we talk to political prisoners from around the globe and bring them here to tell their story. We've done stories concerning many pressing matters, from falsely imprisoned Iraq and Afghanistan civilians to people being held without a trial at Guantanamo Bay. But tonight's story will involve an individual who is not overseas in a war zone, but right here in America being used as a pawn in a battle of ideals. This individual, who is just trying to live his normal life pursuing happiness, but through non-stop media coverage and incessant journalistic probing, has become a prisoner of war. Of course, I'm talking about the kid that knocked up Sarah Palin's daughter, Levi Johnston. Tonight, we will talk to Levi and find out how he became America's greatest political prisoner. Hello, Levi. Hi. Hi. How are you, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing all right. Doing all right? That's doing good. Doing all right, yeah. So, Levi, I've heard you're a big hockey fan. Tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge hockey fan, actually. I mean, hockey is my life all the way through. I mean, when I love going out and playing it. I love going out and watching professionals play it. And I mean, honestly, I think of it as poetry on ice. Poetry on ice. That's a nice way of putting it. So who's your favorite team? You know, I'm going to have to go a little, uh, it's a little far from my home, but I love the San Jose Sharks. Oh, absolutely. It is just, I mean, they're just absolutely my favorite team out there. And when they get together, they have great chemistry. They have, they have great players and they're a great team. You know, some teams are just a bunch of good players, but this one is a great team. They create some beautiful poetry, don't they? Poetry on ice. So have you ever thought about going pro? You know, it's been a dream. And uh, recently, you know, I played in high school. Um, I had some scouts mentioned to me, I have a shot. They think I can do it. They said that I got the right stuff. So, I mean, we'll see what happens in the next couple of years, you know, see what happens. That's good. So you think you'll be able to follow your dream by having a baby at 19 years old? Oh, really? Um, I think that, oh, having a baby will teach me to do, have responsibility. And, you know, responsibility on the ice is because you need it because you have to have responsibility when you have the puck. Yes. All right. Well, so I've also heard that you've recently been engaged to Sarah Palin's daughter, Bristol, the woman that you impregnated. I'm going to have to ask, was that your idea? Yeah. All mine, actually. Um, well, I mean, when you've been going out, and you're 19, you've been going out with a 17-year-old for a few months, you, you know, you're already thinking about marriage, you know? And, you know, I was definitely thinking about it. And after watching all those episodes of Engage and Underage and just seeing how happy all those poor kids were, I thought it was, you know, the logical thing to do. So Sarah Palin, being the candidate for vice president of the Republican Party, hasn't affected your decision in any way, has it? No, not at all. Um, not at all. She, uh, she, she may be the vice presidential nominee, but I married, I married Bristol for, for Bristol. I'm happy. I'm extremely happy right now. All my choice. As happy as I could be. Happy. Okay. So when this baby was being conceived, did you ever think about using birth control? Uh, yeah. Well, all right. In Alaska, they don't really talk about birth control much. It's more of an abstinence only kind of thing. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. I've heard Alaska is a beautiful state, so I'm sad to hear that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alaska is a beautiful state. Have you ever been? No. Oh, I my haven't. God. They, they got it all. They got, they got these, these fields. They got these rivers. They got these mountains. They got this wildlife. They got, they got bears eating salmon. They're going up. And I mean, that's life for you right there. You know, I mean, that is a huge place. And I mean, you could see Russia from your porch. You know that? Oh, well, you can see it. Well, I guess if I want to go see animals kill each other and see Russia, I'll, I'll head up to Alaska. So, abstinence obviously didn't work for you, so don't you think children should know, or teenagers for that matter, should know about birth control so they can protect themselves? Well, you know, I think people in Alaska, they, they think birth control is, is like a sin, and, uh, you know, that's just... That's why they don't want it just being thrown around, you know? They just keep that. 
closet, per se. But if kids are going to be having premarital sex, shouldn't they know about birth control? You, you know, I could, I could see, I, I could see, you know, why you might think that's logical. But the thing is, underneath it all is, I mean, if you got, if you got one sin and you're combining it with another sin, that's double sin, and you don't want those stacking up. So, I mean, that's just, that's just, yeah. I guess I can see your point. Okay. Well, with this upcoming election, I'm also going to have to ask you, who are you thinking about voting for? Uh, well, you know, I'm, I think right now we're in some dark times. You've seen the economy recently. I mean, it's, it's, it's dark times. So I think we need a, just a, a darker solution to these problems. And, you know, I just think a little bit of change never hurt anyone. And, I agree. you know, I think right now when people ask me if I think this country can change, I say, yes, we can. Yes, we can. So, you know, I, I'm just going to keep that to myself, you know, for right now. But, you know, when the election day comes in. Hoping for some change. Hoping for some change, exactly. Well, thank you very much for coming in and talking with us. This has been the Refugee Rendezvous. We just talked to Levi Johnston, who has become a prisoner in his own life. We'll tune in next time, and thank you very much for watching. Have a great night.